Hi everyone, welcome back to the History of Football channel. Today I'll be doing another Forgotten Football Ground as part of my Forgotten Football Ground series. I've got a playlist with over 40 videos of different grounds, go and check it out. But tonight's video is going to be Bellevue, the former home ground of Doncaster Rovers from 1922 to 2006. Doncaster Rovers were formed in 1879 by Albert Jenkins, a fitter at Doncaster's Great Northern Railway Works. He gathered together some friends to play a match against the Yorkshire Institute for the Deaf and Dumb in September 1879. The Institute side took a 4 0 lead, but the game ended for all. And walking back from the game, a team took a rest at the Hall Cross and had a discussion in which they decided to play more and called themselves Doncaster Rovers. Doncaster Rovers had two home grounds before they called Bellevue home. Between 1885 to 1915, they called the Intake Ground home. And then from 1920 to 1922, they played at the Bennetthorpe Ground. Doncaster Rovers had wanted to remain at the Bennetthorpe Ground. However, they had disagreements with the Doncaster Corporation over the development of the, of the site. The Doncaster Corporation eventually agreed that the club could develop 68 acres of land on the low pasture site. The land would be made available to the club on a 21-year lease and an annual rate of £50. Rovers finally had a site for a new permanent ground. Construction of the ground was in the hands of Arthur Thompson, a club director and partner in Thompson & Dixon, a firm of local building contractors. Work commenced during the summer of 1921 and continued through 1922, as well as the banking, a spacious grandstand with a seating capacity of 1100. This was constructed on the racecourse side. Further seating capacity was added in July 1922, when the main stand from Bennetthorpe, constructed around a year earlier, was moved and recited at the town end of the new ground. In addition, the supporters club had started a fund to pay for a cover over the popular side opposite the grandstand. The cost of the new building work amounted to around £4,000, while the cost of reciting the Bennetthorpe stand had been about £1,200. The directors of the club decided to name the ground Bellevue, even though the Bennetthorpe ground was often known as Bellevue Gardens. The supporters club had proposed alternative names such as the St Ledger Ground being the most popular choice, and they protested that the name Bellevue was confusing and incorrect. However, Bellevue eventually became accepted. The first game at Bellevue was against Gainsborough Trinity on the 26th of August 1922, and Doncaster Rovers went on to finish runners-up in the Midland League and gain election to the Football League Division 3 North for the 1923-1924 season. The first league match at Bellevue was a nil-all draw against Wigan Borough on the 25th of August 1923. In 1924, a cover was erected over the popular side opposite the main stand. This cover was extended in the summer of 1927 as part of the investment in ground improvements financed by a grant of £1,500 from the supporters club. The main stand was also extended as part of this investment and was now able to hold 6,000 spectators. The official opening of the new facilities took place on the opening day of the 1927-1928 season. Before the start of the 1928-1929 season, the popular terrace and Spion Cop were concreted. Previously, spectators had stood on Ash Banken and this ground improvement was also financed by the supporters club. Following Doncaster Rovers' promotion to Division 2 in 1934, Work was required so that Bellevue could cope with the anticipated higher attendances. New turnstiles, fencing and gates were installed in the close season of 1935 and the main stand was extended at a cost of £700. By the end of the 1930s, Bellevue could accommodate around 40,000 spectators. It was also during this time that the club confirmed their future at Bellevue, negotiating a 21-year extension on the lease with the local council. In the early 1950s, floodlights were installed at the ground and to celebrate this, Scottish champions Hibernian were invited to Bellevue on the 4th of March 1952 in front of a crowd of 18,474. Doncaster Rovers lost the match three goals to nil. Further floodlight friendlies followed in 1952 and 1953 include matches against an international 11 side and Celtic, with these crowds being massive for the day. 
In the mid-1950s, the FA in the Football League allowed lights to be used for competitive matches and in January 1956, an FA Cup fourth round replay against Bristol Rovers became the first competitive game to be played under Bellevue's floodlights. A better than usual crowd saw Bristol Rovers win one goal to nil in front of 22,093 spectators. By 1964, the once pioneering lights had become obsolete and Doncaster Rovers were told by the Football League that they would have to improve their lighting system if they were to be allowed to play floodlight games in the future. The club had to raise £15,000 and then gain permission from the War Office because of the proximity to the old Doncaster Airport to erect the four 120-foot tall pylons. Work began in May 1965 and the new floodlights were first used in a home game with Hartlepool United in August 1965. Bellevue during the 1970s did not see many changes, although there were a few cosmetic changes such as the floodlights being upgraded in 1977, and after much planning and asking for permission from the local council, Doncaster Rovers were finally able to build a social club on the Bellevue site a facility that now serves the clubhouse for Doncaster Town Moor Golf Club. Following the Valley Parade fire, Bellevue's capacity was reduced to 9,900 and £100,000 had to be spent on any fire precautions in the main stand. Also, the north stand at the town end had to be demolished. Things got worse for Doncaster Rovers in May 1987, as before the final home game of the season against Middlesbrough, Mining subsidence was discovered on the popular side. The cover and terracing were condemned as unsafe and closed, and the ground capacity was reduced to 4,859. The next season started with a three-sided ground, but eventually an uncovered popular side was reopened, and the capacity was increased back to 8,259, although with average league crowds of 1,913, this was unlikely to be tested. Following the aftermath of the Hillsborough disaster, Bellevue's capacity was once again reduced to 7,294. In the early 1990s, there was talk of Doncaster Rovers moving away from Bellevue, and in 1995, the main stand was set ablaze, which caused extensive damage. Nine months later, Chairman Ken Richardson was arrested following an evening match against Fulham. He was found guilty of conspiracy to commit arson and sentenced to four years in jail. The actual arsonist, Alan Christensen, received a one-year prison sentence. It were revealed that Christensen, a former SES soldier, had been paid £10,000 by Richardson to start the fire. His accomplices both received nine-month prison sentences suspended for two years. In the summer of 2003, work began to repair the town end terrace to replace the old seat in the main stand and to extend the Rossington Terrace. In the summer of 2004, the popular side terrace was also extended and executive boxes were built at the town end of the stadium. New club offices, a new supporters bar and the application of tarmac to the car park completed a much needed facelift. In a move that angered some fans, Bellevue was renamed the Air Stadium as part of a sponsorship deal with Rotherham-based finance company Air Finance. The capacity reached the region of 11,500. A new stadium had long been mooted for Doncaster Rovers. This finally started to become reality when planning permission was granted. Construction started on the 17th of October 2005 for a 15,000 all-seater community stadium complex. The new ground was named the Keep Moat Stadium. The last game played at Bellevue was on the 23rd of December 2006 against League One leaders Nottingham Forest. Doncaster Rovers finished their time at the stadium with a win, with a goal from Theo Street ensuring a 1-0 victory. In 2007, demolition work began at Bellevue and it is now a housing estate. The record attendance at Bellevue come in 1948 when 37,099 people watched a match against Hull City. However, there were reports that more people were in the ground than what was reported due to people climbing over walls and jumping over fences. Besides Doncaster Rovers playing at Bellevue, Doncaster Rugby League Football Club played there between 1995 to 96, and then from 1998 to 2006, 
and also the Doncaster women's football side played there between 1991 to 1997. So that concludes my video on Bellevue, the former home ground of Doncaster Rovers from 1992 to 2006. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, let me know if you've been to this ground. Unlike some of the grounds I've done recently, there was a ton of information on this ground. So I had lots to talk about tonight. Thanks to everyone that has been supporting the channel over the last few months. And also to the recent subscribers. I recently passed 1,300 subscribers on YouTube, which is a big milestone for myself. Also, you can find me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, I've got history of football pages on there. The links are in the description below. And also, if you're a rugby league fan, I also run a page called Rugby League History. I'll put a, a link in the description below for those sites as well. So anyways, this has been History of Football, and I'll catch us all later in the next one.